Hello. Hello. Welcome to this week's video. About dogs. Travelling with dogs, taking them with you in your camper van motorhome and generally travelling with them. All the things you need to pack and take with you. So stay tuned and we'll share with you all of our top tips. quite fitting that this week's video comes to you live, not live, but from <laughs> Alt Nahara. We're in uh, the Black Isle in Scotland and one of the reasons we picked this site was particularly for Molly, wasn't it? Yeah, on the lock. She likes swimming and yeah, she likes swimming the and walking. great outdoors. <laughs> and moving, yeah. And she's, uh, she's been enjoying herself. She's been sat outside most of the time. So some of the main things we wanted to share with you about how we, how we look after Molly, how we, how we bring her with us, and how she gets on. When we first got the camper van, we weren't sure she was going to like it, did we? No, just because it's, although it's a biggish space, it's quite an enclosed space. And, and I think a lot of the tips, um, obviously, are specific to Molly and her personality. Um, so you obviously want to adapt them to your own dog, your own lifestyle. But um, yeah, she, she really seems to enjoy it, doesn't she? Yeah, we were amazed. Lots of people said to us, don't worry, your dog will be fine and just adapt. And she's absolutely brilliant. She loves it. She loves going with us. She loves being with us in the camper van. Um, when we open the door, she jumps straight in. Um, she's got her own place. We've discovered on this trip, she likes to sleep in not where we thought she was sleeping, haven't we? Yeah, yes. we, we found that when we go to bed, um, she's now taken to sleeping on the chairs. <laughs> little sneak. And then she gets oh, yeah. off in the morning before we wake up or before we come down yeah, to the ladder. Yeah, she hears us stirring. She, we, we heard her jump off the other morning and then scurry back to where she's supposed to sleep. Um, yeah, cheeky. So, yeah. Cheeky. We'll start and we'll show you some of the, the main things that we do to keep Molly in tip-top condition on a trip. <laughs> or just happy. <laughs> or just happy, yeah. So Molly has a selection of leads depending on the type of walk and also who's walking her. Um, Collies naturally are chasers um, and she does like to chase traffic. So we'll start with her least favorite lead, which is this one. Um, lovely colour. It's a figure of eight lead. When she was a puppy, um, she chased traffic really badly um, and it was it was awful just walking, and even trying to walk her just a small way to the park was horrendous, um, for me anyway. So I took her to Pets at Home, she tried on all manner of leads, managed to escape from every single one and somebody gave me a tip of um, this figure of eight lead. This is the second one and she's seven so they've blasted up pretty well. Um, I think it's from Amazon about eight pounds. Um, so to just demonstrate how it goes on, come here Mal, sit. So literally goes on like that. Um, and it just fits on behind the ears and across her nose. Um, basically, if you look where a normal lead attaches, all the weight of the dog, or if you've got a harness, all the power of the dog can pull you. So it's really hard to keep her. As soon as she pulls, it turns her head. So she can't, oh, see, she will sulk now because she's got this on. She knows we're nowhere near traffic. Um, but it is, it is really good. And she's a, a different dog to walk when she's got that one. She's going to float along nicely next to you. Um, so otherwise, just your standard extendable lead with poo bag attachments. Um, useful, particularly if you're on a campsite. Um, and then she can um, just go into the dog walk area. It gives you a, a, a bit space. She's not really keen of going to the toilet when she's on her lead. <laughs> it's quite unnatural for her. Um, so this one does give her the bit of space. Maybe it's just the privacy she's looking for. Um, and then the one that we use most of all um, and just a kind of everyday lead is just this halty one with multiple attachments on it so you can make it longer, shorter, good for tying her up um, onto things um, and clipping her outside if you need to. Perfect, thank you very much. Thanks Molly, good demonstration of the leads You're there. You're a good girl. You're a good girl, aren't you? So the most useful thing that we've got for bringing the camper van with Molly is this corkscrew, just a metal corkscrew, literally just screws into the ground. And then again, using multiple 
lead length, depending on how far she's allowed to roam, just clip her on. And then she's got a bit more space, a bit of freedom to wander around. Oh, there you go, right on cue. I'll give her treats in that bag. She knows where the biscuits are. <laughs> <laughs> I did say right, you could have a right. biscuit, didn't I? Bring it here then. Okay. So another useful tip given to us by one of our viewers um, is using your dog lead, so the Holti on full extension, or however short you want it, hooked onto the door latch on the Ducato. So literally, hooks on, and then that leaves it free to, you know, she wander around and she's attached to the van, she can't go anywhere. It's useful if you're just driving a campsite before you do anything, you can just literally latch it on and then it's easy to remove when you want to. Great tip. Um, it's always a, a good tip to bring a couple of toys from home um, just to keep them amused. I'm feeling comfortable. Oh. She seems to like that one. Yeah, she's got a couple, um, a tennis ball, uh, like a chew toy thing um, and a burger. Excellent. Toys. I think she's more radio controlled stuff as well. <laughs> radio controlled mouse to chase or radio controlled squirrel <laughs> so as you've probably seen in previous videos we keep most of molly's items under the seat in the front here along with some of our own naturally um but just in there easily <laughs> accessible she knows where the food is um so yeah fits in nicely and, and i'll show you what we pack for her and then there's a view out the window as well <laughs> it's a lock off i just get yeah. distracted by that it's fantastic isn't it gratuitous uh Lock Scenery shop. shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. So, I've brought Molly's bag out just to show you what's in there. As we mentioned a second ago, a um, couple of balls, but we're on a slight slant, so she's not allowed to play with these outside because I think they'll roll away under the van into the into the lock. Um, Thanks, her wishbone chewy thing. Ooh. Um, poo bags naturally. Dentist sticks. She normally has dentist sticks at lunchtime. <laughs> Um, and then um, dog biscuits and dog treats. I'll put them in a little plastic container just to keep them fresh. And then if you're trying to catch her attention. <laughs> yep, definitely working. She knows where they are. And also a food. Now, Molly eats dry dog food, um, which we buy in big sacks from um, a breeder local to us. Um, and the dog food was recommended for her. Right here. Um, but in order to keep it fresh and actually to make it much easier whilst we're travelling, um, I portion it ooh, <laughs> and put it in um, these little Ziploc bags. And then it is much easier and much quicker um, breakfast and tea time just to grab a bag, empty it, tip it into the bowl and then you're done. So you don't need to worry about bringing um, enough food because it's all measured out in the bags. And I always bring one for spare just in case. And another useful tip, have you got any in the poo bags? If you've run out of bags, that's something I've, I, found, I found really useful. If you, sorry, <laughs> if you run out of bags, um, one thing you can do is put it into poo bags and then you can also reuse the poo bag for when you take it for a walk, etc. So you don't end up wasting plastic. It's very yeah, useful. Yeah, I didn't want to show you that. I didn't want you to like, <laughs> really think that we were bad people and keeping our dog's food in poo bags, but we were literally packing up to leave and I ran out of these. So she has got a few packed in poo bags, but we will recycle. But I, I used them, I used it the day. I fed her and then took yeah, the well. bag up with me and then it was when great. When it comes out the other end. Yeah, recycling is great. <laughs> very useful. Thank you very much. So again, this is another item that we have featured um, a couple of times previously, the pooch onesie. Mm -hmm. um, it is an expensive mm -hmm. item and I objected at first because I thought I didn't really see the difference of, it, um, of a towel compared to this. But basically, um, packs up into this ni nice neat bag and this is the large dog molly's generally classed as a medium-sized dog and um, this is for large dogs so it's quite big we will demonstrate putting her in it in a minute but that might take a few attempts um it's really good if she is wet um and particularly because she likes water so much so basically it's it's a big it's a big bag she gets in it we zip her in leave her in there for a bit and then she dries so this is how it starts, and as you'll see, it's uh, it's quite big. To be fair, I reckon I could I could fit in it. Um, so it's got a Velcro neck and a zip. So we'll see how this 
attempt goes. Right, Molly, I'm bra bribed with a biscuit. She's helping herself. <clears> you? <throat> so I've laid the bag out now and I'll just demonstrate how a wet dog gets in the bag and dries off. Molly, can you get in the bag please? Good girl. There we go. And then you just manhandle your dog a little bit. Put it around the neck first. Put this bit round like that. So they're in. There we go. Because it's big, she's still got room to sit up and have a fidget. <laughs> she's slightly confused because she's on a lead. There you go. Perfect. And then she zips in. You can give them a give them a dry. And basically the towel and the, the heat from being zipped in um, dries her off. She comes out. Ready, good as new. There you go. Yay. <laughs> Look at you, all clean and dry. So uh, for traveling, when we're on the move, um, we secure Molly um, just on the passenger seat. So if there happens to not be a passenger, we just close that one and then clip the lead through. Um, and then just give her enough length on the lead so she can make um, a couple of different seating choices. She doesn't sit on the chair for travelling. We do have an actual um, proper seatbelt but um, we don't like her to um, sit on the seats if we can help it. So with this one she can sit under the table there um, or she likes to lie here and travel. Just gives her um, a few different choices if we're on a long journey. Yeah, the, the favourite point for, for travelling is down there, basically curls around that, into that um, corner area there, doesn't she? Yeah. And the yeah. good thing with the, your seatbelt is you can still use it if you've got passengers. So if you've got two rear passengers, you can still put the seatbelt on to the seatbelt buckle and it doesn't get in the way of the passengers as well. Yeah, and she can sit. She can be near us, but not near enough to interfere with the driving. Exactly, yeah. Which is also a legal requirement, isn't it, Molly? <laughs> legal requirement. Something else we found really useful for Molly was when she's outside, sometimes the camper van, she can be a bit, feel a bit exposed and dogs don't like to have something like comforting. So I put the windbreak up and then she usually sits and curls around the inside of it. So it gives her obviously some shelter and us some shelter from the wind, but also it gives her something to put her back against and she feels comfortable and she likes to sleep against it, or lie against it during the day. It's one of the, one of the things that gives her a bit more peace and security. Also it stops when you've got people walking past your pitch and the dog getting all you know angst and, um, and upset and barking at people, it tends to help stop barking as well. So if your dog likes to bark at people walking past, try a windbreak, it works really well for us. There's a little window, but she can't quite see out of it. So we hope you found that video useful. Um, they're just some of our top tips for, you know, traveling with a dog. And it made us um, much more comfortable when we started traveling with her, all the little tips and things, um, and, and the dogs absolutely love it. So if you're concerned about taking your dog or getting a camper van, you've not got one, think about your dogs, they absolutely love it, honestly. And my absolute best tip if you've got an active dog like Molly um, is just spend your days taking her for a really long walk and wearing her out and then <laughs> just have peace and quiet for the evening. Yeah, we, we've loved the, the camper van's given us the access to the outdoors and taking her places so it's really, really good for that as well. So if you've got a dog that's active or even if you haven't, you know, there's still a fantastic experience. So any ideas or suggestions you've got we've not mentioned, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like our videos, feel free to subscribe. For those who watch our video channel, don't worry, we will be bringing you a full uh, video showing our, our travels to Alt Nahara so you can see the site properly and where we are yeah. uh, and what we've been doing. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Cheers, bye. Excuse me. She thinks the Molly, there. get in, please. Get, <laughs> get, in the t get in the towel. This way, this way, this way. Thank you. Very good. Sit down. Thank you. No, get on there properly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this one again. <laughs> okay. So I've laid the towel out for her and then imagine she's soaking wet. Come and get in. Good girl, lie down. Good girl. And then... Oh, <laughs> capture her quick! <laughs>